Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we are getting into the 10-game mark of the NHL season, and I do my annual At the 10-Game Mark video, which I've already did the first half of up until the Montreal Canadiens. And now we're going to do Nashville to Winnipeg. And my thoughts on where each play team is at, at the 10-game mark, where they may be going, maybe some players they may be looking to move, uh, if they're buyers, if they're sellers, it seems like. And they'll say, well, it's only 10-game mark. You can't really say, well, we're making a projection. And we're also going to look at where I thought they would be before the season started. And you're going to comment in the comment section, tell me what you think, because that's the most important thing. Right? The conversation about hockey, my friends, it is my life. If it's yours too, comment in the comment section and tell me all about it. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network and the Pearl of Wisdom Show. There will be frolic. All right, let's look at the first team. Said it was going to be Nashville. Guess what? It's going to be Nashville. Uh, Nashville Predators and Yes, it's been a rough start, hasn't it been, for the Nashville Predators. They are, uh, look at their record here, 4-6-1, and one, just one against Calgary, um, impressively. Had a difficult time, went over to Europe, won their first two games, came back, and really had a hard time finding their legs, I think. Last year... Nashville had the most fighting majors of any NHL team in the league. This year, it seems like doing all of that and being the battlers that they were last year, which was quite a bit, maybe mentally just a daunting task for them. Um, when you go through a season like Nashville did, and I, I don't really think I took this into account enough, or at all, actually. I didn't really think about it. Uh, before the season when I had Nashville winning the Central, believe it or not. And they still could. They still could. But this team was a battling team. They set an identity for themselves. And the question now is going to be, can they get back to that? Against Calgary, this is now the 4th of November? Yes. Uh, so against Calgary, they kind of did. And you may see them start to get back to that now. Uh, after coming back from Europe, Legs are a little heavy. Yeah, there's a lot of flight time there, a lot of getting readjusted to life again, and all of those sort of things like that. And it's possibly possible Hines just said, you know what, I'm not going to push these guys yet. I'm going to wait till their footing is back to where I know that they can play the way they need to play to win like they did last year. Now, the thing is, though, when I said, as I say that, all year last year, I said, there is very little chance that this team is going to be able to do well in the playoffs playing like warrior, like, like every game is a war. So it's also possible that Hines and, the, and, and all of them have realized that they got to pick their spots and they can't really do that every single game or they're going to be burnt out by the end of the season. So I've had to rethink here with Nashville. Um, I thought, they were going to be first. I still think that they could. They have a really good chance of coming back in this division. I still love their lineup as far as depth is concerned with, uh, you know, Forsberg, Granlin. I love the Niederreiter pickup. Ryan Johansson is sort of an underrated, solid second-line center. He gets underrated because he was brought in to be a number one but never really became that. But he is a solid number two. And... Um, the defense, I still find solid. I, I think is solid as well. Dante Fabro is being scratched right now, which was, is interesting. I didn't even realize that. But Fabro coming back into the lineup, hopefully he learns whatever lesson he needs to learn there. Their top four, even six really, is solid. Um, the question I have, Eli Tolvin in the whipping boy for this team like forever. It's almost like, uh, to me, they... They should think about possibly trading him and a pick to even add more offense to their offense. And I think that could happen somewhere down the road as long as they're uh, in a position to do that. What happens? Why is Philip Tomasino, if Nashville fans, if you're out there, any fans for that matter, what happened with him? 
He's got five goals in, in the minors in seven games. Uh, I can only imagine that he must have come into camp with sort of an attitude that he already tied up a spot and maybe rubbed people the wrong way. It happens with young players. I'm just guessing there. I don't know. But when he comes back into the lineup, and I do believe he will, this team uh, will have more offense. There's a lot more speed there. Get their battle back up again. I can't, I just can't see this team falling off. Um, the other problem, of course, is UC Saros hasn't been doing well ever since he got back from Europe either. And I'm going to lean that that'll change. You know, he was just too good last year. Lankinen has picked up the slack a little bit in his starts, which is good. Um, but I think UC Saros will get it back and Nashville will get back on their horse again and, you know, maybe not win the division, but I, I think they're a better team than this. Tell me what you think about that, Nashville fans. Also, let me know what happened with Tomasino if you guys have any idea of what that, why that is because I had him inked into the lineup this year. He certainly should have, uh, you know, should give them a better chance to win if, when he's playing at his best than like a guy like Zachary Sanford or, you know, even Cole Smith or something like that. So let me know. All right, subscribe to my channel and let me know, boys and girls. The New Jersey Devils, my pick to make the playoffs this year, and I got a ribbon for that from a lot of people saying, how could you possibly pick the New Jersey Devils? They haven't been crap for a long time, blah, 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 blah. I actually picked them to make the playoffs last year. It was a little too soon. I have a tendency to do that with young teams. I kind of jumped the gun a bit, but I went right back with it this year. And it looks like, as uh, for now anyways, that I was accurate in my assertions that they will do that. They've come out flying. They've looked fantastic. I've been a rough supporter the whole time. Although I did say this year, if they, if by the 20 game mark, they weren't hitting their stride, I think they, I thought they, they might have to let them go. But um, Ruff has been a great coach for a long time. And I really thought that he, would be able to get this team going the way they should be. I, I did have a little bit of insecurity about it, but 8-3-0 and in 11 games, uh, goals for, 40 goals for, 28 goals against. And that's the part that uh, most people are surprised about with this team. However, I, I, I wasn't. And the reason why is this: their top four is absolutely fantastic especially after they got John Marino. I don't know what Pittsburgh was thinking about that, and we'll talk about that later. But um, Graves, Marino, Hamilton, and Siegethal are as good of a top four as you're going to find in the league. Pushing down a guy like Damon Severson, who a lot of New Jersey fans have been kind of calling to be moved for quite some time. And I do think that that is possible since he is a 2023 UFA, and they have so many players ahead of him playing so well. But for what? The biggest issue, of course, and it has been for a while now, for the New Jersey Devils was goaltending. And they brought in Vitek Vanacek. Now, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that I was all oh, very confident that Vanacek was going to be good and great and all that stuff like that. But I would say that he came from an organization that wasn't really known for developing goaltenders very well. and. He did look pretty good in front of a bad defense last year in Washington. So I thought there was a chance that he could fill in this role pretty well. So far, he has done fairly well. Um, now, Mackenzie Blackwood would, is injured again. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with this guy. He's just growing injury. I'm not saying this guy like it's his fault, but it's just you can't stay away from injuries. I, I, some goaltenders... Just never get away from those growing problems the whole time that they're in the league. Uh, they just never do, and they end up never making it. I, I fear to say that is with Mackenzie Blackwood. How many injuries has he had so far? It's I don't know. So they're bringing up Banachek. So Banachek's going to take the reins, but the good news is the fellow that came in and did so well last year in his time Nico Dawes, who they really wanted to keep in the minors most of the year this year, from what I understand. He's 
in three games, he's crushing it pretty good. 194 and a 934. So he may get a chance to come back up again. I thought he really looked good last year. I'm not a goaltender coach, so I can't say. But from what I saw, he looked like he could play in the NHL. So I picked him to make the playoffs. I picked him to like be fourth, though. The way they're playing right now, I might have even undersold them a bit. Just for Brat, can he keep up that pace? Uh, probably not. He's probably more of a point-to-game guy, but he's flying. And it's on a contract year. Funny how that tends to work. I don't even think Jack Hughes has hit a stride yet. He sure is having an excellent year. Injury-free. Cross our fingers that he stays injury-free. Um, and they still have guys that are... Uh, Andre Pallott is injured right now when he goes back into the lineup. But overall, just watching this team, it seems like they figured it out. Um, one thing I wanted to mention was Miles Wood. Uh, I don't know if it was four or five games ago. They lost the game, and it wasn't. It didn't look good. And I loved what he had to say. He said, "I'm just tired for, tired of playing for a bad team." Um, was one of the things, and uh, you know, we're. I love that statement because he said it straight out. They were a bad team that game. Um, J.T. Miller in Vancouver. Uh, just was, uh, they brought up to him uh, a situation where fans were throwing the jersey on, on, on the ice. And he totally deflected it as if, oh, it was the fans' stupidity for buying the jerseys and throwing their stuff on the ice and stuff like that. I much rather hear, would hear what Miles Wood said. Tired of playing with a bad team. Saying it straight out, honest. New Jersey's been bad for a while, and I'm tired of it. And it just seems like his attitude is carried on in this room. And they've all just said, let's play like we're tired of being a bad team. Because they have the talent here. They have the talent. They have the top nine. They have Dawson Mercer. They have a Sharon Govich who's looking really good this year. They're all right in that, that bubble of bursting out age. 23, Fabian Zetterlin, 23. Uh, Jesper Bratt, 24. You know, Sharon Govich. This is a team that's ready to burst out. And it's and, and I think it's a wonderful, I think it's an awesome thing that Wood came out and said, I'm tired of it. And I'm sure it was in the room saying, are we going to play like we're tired of it now? Awesome. Anyways, love New Jersey. Tell me what you think about that fans. Did you have them to make in the playoffs before the season started like I did? Is there anything that you would like to see happen in New Jersey? Um, like I said, Damon Severson seems like could be the odd man out on defense. But my question is, for what? Like, there isn't many holes in this lineup. If he were to be traded, it would probably be some, maybe a veteran for the same position. Because they have Nemechek, who is seems to be doing okay in the AHL. They have Makamadoulin coming up. Ball is looking for a spot. They got tons of depth. This team is ready to go, my friends. New Jersey fans, subscribe to my channel. Comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about what I said. New York Islanders. And um, I'm surprised. I, I can't say it any other way, man. I did say, one thing I did say is um, the New York Islanders season, I thought, was going to depend on if... Lane Lambert was a lot like Barry Trotz or better. And it appears like he is. Um, this team is flying. And not only that, maybe better. Because I think I talk to Islanders fans all the, all the, a, lo a lot when I'm doing these videos because I send these videos out for the purpose of discussion. I, I love talking hockey. And Islanders fans are incredibly knowledgeable fans and know their team inside and out. And they've been screaming for a long time for guys like Oliver Wallstrom to get a chance up on the top line, Anthony Beauvillier, and um, to kind of let these guys go a little bit. Barry Trotz has a record that you can't deny. He's a fantastic coach. But maybe it was time, maybe he did kind of hold the back the reins a little bit too much on this team. And Lambert has come out and seems like 
he's kind of let the reins go a little bit. But yet, when we look at the, they're still only allowed 27 goals in 11 games. That's not too shabby, man. Now, we'll look at one of the reasons, the big reasons why. And 41 goals, which is number one in the division. Like, who saw them being the highest scoring team in the division besides, I have to admit, some Islanders fans that were pro Islanders saying that they thought their offense was going to come out. They were going to be better offensively under Lambert. And it appears that they are right. Um, Wallstrom, four goals in three assists, seven points in 10 games, heading for a career year. Barzell's dishing the dishing it out, hasn't scored a goal this year, and that's impressive. Barzell hasn't even scored a goal this year, and they have 41 goals already in 11 games. You got Anders Lee looking like Anders Lee again. Brock Nelson. This team was tired last year. They're not tired this year, and they're really feeling it. That's the best way I can say it. They're really feeling it. Palmieri's come back. Um, look at the fourth line even tossing up. All through their lineup, they're getting goals and points. So call me. I got to say it when I got to say it. I wasn't a believer. Now I got to be a believer for now. I got to be a believer now. Um, I do still have my concerns, but getting to the defense was always good. I never had a problem with that, with their defense. I thought the Romanoff trade trade was a fine trade. I think Romanoff is a solid defenseman. Noah Dobson, I did believe he was going to have a great year this year. And Pelich and Pulak, we already know about them. Great combination. So, um, And then, of course, Ilya Sorokin who is just unbelievable. And if this team is heading for the playoffs like we think we are, they are, uh, Vesna. Vesna possibility here. He's looked, he's looked that good. Not really a surprise, but more of a surprise that the team is really doing as well as they are early. Um, my only issue, and it was before the season started, and it still is, is still the replacement players when players get injured. They uh, they don't really have any injuries right now at all, do they? Nothing. So they're playing with the top health with the top healthy lineup, but in the minors, it's a little eh, you know Atu Ratu is he going to be ready right away? Uh, uh, Atu Koibula has been up a couple times. He's really not a great skater. Uh, Bardo is still feeling not really a guy. You know, like there is, it's going to be dicey, I think, when they have to, if they have to start replacing players on this team. And we'll see how they hold up over the long haul. Because the Islanders, when they are tired, are not the same team. And if you don't have replacement players with this older lineup, for the most part, it could be a problem down the stretch still. So, okay. Tell me what you think about that, Islanders fans. Let's get to the next. Uh, subscribe to my channel and let me know. Uh, New York Rangers, and a lot of people were surprised with me when I said that I didn't think the Rangers were going to have as good a year this year as people thought. Now, I was on the fence of whether that would just be in the playoffs or the regular season as well. And the reason why was... They're just, it's just the glaring problem of their five-on-five -five play. It's, it certainly will not pan out in the playoffs having a five-on-five -five play like that. So it, how is it going to translate with the regular season? Quite often you can get by on your, uh, on your power play and uh, stuff like power play, even penalty kill, they score on the penalty kill. But most of the games played five on five, and this team's analytics five on five are just not very good. Uh, that goes for Zabonijad, that goes for Vincent Trocek, who they brought in, which is why I said that doesn't even seem like they care about it. It doesn't even seem like they care that their five on five game is, play, is, is not that great. Bringing in a guy like Vinny Trocek, who isn't all that great five on five, you would think that would be the number one thing you'd be taking care of. You'd be looking at five-on-five five players like the Colorado Avalanche have and stuff. And so far, their start has been a little bit soft. They have had a bit of a, a difficult schedule, I'll give them that. But it's not bad. Six, four, and two, it's okay. Do I think it's uh, 
you know, and it, again, it's only 11 games in the season for them right now. So we're not going to go, we're not going to go crazy, but it's just what I thought to begin with. And from what I've watched from them, I still see it as a problem. They still seem to have problem with their five on five play. Now, the bigger problem I've seen with the Rangers that I didn't even anticipate is their defense isn't sitting all that, doing all that great. And I thought their defense would hold up the five on five play through the regular season and they would still do very well. They would survive on the power play, get goals that way. Um, and also, I thought Kako and Lafreniere may help out on their five on five play as they grow older and get bigger which so far really doesn't seem to be translating right now, although they are still looking a little better. But the um, defense has been spotty, and Shesterkin doesn't look like himself either. And they survived, let's face it, they survived a lot on their, on their defense, on Shesterkin last year. Um, and if he's not sitting at 100% Shesterkin, eh. And then, of course, they got Yuroslav Halak, who has done, it's been terrible every time they put him in. Like, it's just been an absolute disaster. So, right now, it's, they're looking like I thought they would be. Um, I can't say it any other way. So, we'll see what, how this pans out down the road. Uh, I still, uh, I would like to see them at least pay attention to their five-on-five -five game. Like, Vasily Goudreau, Goche, Blay, Carpenter, and Reeves, all of the, none of those guys are great five on five. Barclay's a good defensive player. Um, Barclay Goudreau. But overall, there's not much here. So they're really relying on their top six for a lot of stuff, and none of them are very good five on five either. Defense should be better. I think it will get better, and I think it will hold this team up, and the team will do very good down the stretch. Can't think Shesterkin's going to have his troubles, which I think are mostly related to the defense in front of him, to tell you the honest truth, although last year it didn't cause a problem. Um, it's not like he's playing bad. He's just not playing super heroic like he usually does, right? So I think he'll, come, I think he'll probably bounce back and things will be fine. All right, Rangers fans, tell me what you think about that. Uh, sorry if I have to poo-poo on your team a little bit. <laughs> I do on my own team. Plenty. I'm an Edmonton Oilers fan. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about that. Okay, Ottawa Senators. And a lot of people were really high on the Ottawa Senators last year. And I have to admit I wasn't. Uh, or this year. And I have to admit I wasn't super high on them. I, it's not that I don't like Ottawa, the Ottawa Senators. Or that I think that they're heading in the wrong direction. I don't. I do think, though, and somebody in one of the chat rooms brought this up to me, that uh, Smith may not be the coach that I thought he was to begin with. I, you know what? I didn't really pay attention to it. I think I was so enamored with their... Sometimes you, sometimes I can do, like a lot of people do, you, you just... You love an energy team and a fighting team and a hard team and all of those sort of things like that. And Ottawa's all that. All, the, all that. You know, Brady Kachuk. Freaking, ah, I love Brady Kachuk. I love all the Kachuks. Um, and you sort of miss the fact that, you know what, they kind of run around a lot. Yeah, they hit, but maybe in places where they shouldn't be hitting and they should be playing, laying off a little bit and play, getting back into their position and stuff. And it doesn't seem like Smith cares about that and just wants them to keep on playing the way they're playing, which doesn't translate very well into wins, especially in the playoffs. Um, like I said, we see it with Tampa Bay Lightning and Colorado Avalanche that have had so much success so far um, that if your five-on-five -five play isn't there, it's probably you're probably not going to be uh, too successful. So... I also was not a huge fan of the defense. Uh, I love Jake Sanderson. He's 6'3", six, six, 195-pound stud. Looks great for a 20-year-old, but he's still a 20-year-old. And um, besides that, Hamannick, Brandstrom, Holden, Zaitsev, and, of course, the injury to Zub, which is enormous for this team. Like, if there was one guy besides Chapot that I did not want to see get injured, 
it was Artem Zub. Um, so it's it's tough, and I think it's going to be a fairly tough year. And the funny thing is, I still think they're a better team than they were last year. <laughs> but Detroit got better. Um, it's not they're not the only team that got better. Buffalo is going to be better. You know, like the whole a lot of the teams in the that weren't very good last year became better this year, and I think better than Ottawa this year because Ottawa wasn't able to fix the defense. Possibly that could change. I've heard they've been in the market for a defenseman. They could bring in a defenseman. Um, you know, Talbot's coming back, who I'm not a huge fan of. Forsberg has been trying to hold the forts. This team just doesn't scream playoffs to me, and it didn't from the beginning of the year. And so far they've struggled early this year um, with a 4-6-0 and record. Uh, haven't won one game on the road and the style of game that Smith plays is not a style that usually wins on the road and it's coming out here that they're not a great road team so I don't know if there's a really good coach out there I have to admit whoever that was comment in the comment section let me know who you were so I can give you props because I did miss it and uh, you pointed out very well, and I agree with you now. I'm not a fan of, like, they, this team needs more of a system. All right, Ottawa fans, comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about that. Philadelphia Flyers. And, yes, did I have the Philadelphia Flyers in the bottom of the league? I did. Um, but I did say you never know with Barry. You never know with uh, Tortorella. You just never know. And this team has come out hard. They play the Tortorella style. I just thought even with that, it was going to be difficult. Now, analytically speaking, their uh, expected offense isn't very good. Their expected defense isn't very good. But they're playing loose, right? So they have a high shooting percentage. You know, when teams are playing loose and they have nothing to lose, it's funny how those corners get picked instead of hitting the post. Uh, they're not, you know, the pucks are, they end up shooting, they don't shoot the puck right at the goaltender, and things just go in for you. Is that going to keep on going? I'll say it again. You never know with Tortorella. <laughs> uh, the big story, of course, in Philadelphia is the, and this is another thing I said, I mentioned this, and if you watch the Steel Flyers All Sports podcast, which isn't all sports, all teams, everything, uh, podcast that does focus a lot on the Flyers. I mentioned that everywhere Tortorella goes, it seems that um, goaltenders get better. Not to me, that's a sign of a great coach. And 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 here so far, anyways, only ten games or eleven games into the season, it's happening with Carter Hart. He is just being amazing. Um, Tortorella says all he does is he tells everybody to leave the goal, leave the goaltender alone, and and basically if 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 his goaltender needs anything, he gets it. That's it. Goaltender coach talks to the goaltender, and nobody else, unless he wants it that way. However, he wants it is the way it is. Simple makes sense, right? Um, but Zamula, Sealer, Rista, Linen. Sandheim's playing a lot better. D'Angelo is playing as well as I thought he was. But the guy who's really benefited is Proveroff, Konechny, Hayes. He benched Konechny and Hayes there against San Jose a little while ago. And what I loved about it is both of them answered like, you know what, we didn't play very well. That's it. You know, honest, straight out. What I love about Tortorella is he is flat out honest. He expects honesty in the room. He, he, there's no filters. You can say what you want to say. There could be arguments or whatever, but you get the crap out. And uh, it seems like he 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 said that there was a problem in the room when he started. He came out publicly and said it. And it seems like that whatever that problem is is fixed. It's amazing what honesty will do uh, for a room, and just being saying what you got to say, getting whatever it is off your chest and stuff like that. Anyways, the team just keeps on rolling. I didn't even look at their record here. Uh, it's not a fantastic record, but it's better than I think anybody would have thought with that roster. I mean, the roster is still on paper 
let's face it, not very good. Where are they? Here we are. Philadelphia, you know, five, three, and two. They've had how many on the road? Just more on the road. More on the road. No, same on the road as they are at home. Um, they're going to keep on playing that grinding out style. You better be well, willing to work when Philadelphia comes into town. You know, it's uh, and it's going to continue to be that way. What's going to happen when injuries happen and replacement players have to come in and in a lineup that. You know, Morgan Frost is getting scratched. I kind of thought that would happen. Uh, but the next man up theory, what's going to happen with these younger guys that come up and play? Are they going to be able to handle it? Is this lineup going to be able to hold up over the long haul? I think highly unlikely. But I'll... S Tortorella, man, you just never know when you're talking about the great Tortorella. Philadelphia Flyers fans, let me know what you think about that. And uh, subscribe to my channel and let me know. And go check out the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. I think you'll enjoy it. Some great writers there. Uh, and great uh, podcasts going on there with Steel and Lance. Um, I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Next, Pittsburgh Penguins. And my team that I really, I just like Joe who uh, Pro Joe is his nickname, a buddy of mine, what he said last year, and I'll just continue saying because I agree with him now, is that I'll keep on saying they're going to make the playoffs until they don't because they just get it done. Now, they've gone through a rough stretch. They've lost like six in a row. But it was a Western road trip. The schedule hasn't been kind to them. Um, they started off okay. I really haven't got a read on what this team is. Most of the wins that they have had have been in soft spots for the opposition where they're coming back off a road trip or uh, they're, they've already played several games on the road and they're a little tired. You know, they're just, and then they go on the road and they get beat up pretty bad. Come back home, first game again, and first game they're playing off of a Western road trip is Boston who's flying. Whatever I'm about to say right now, it doesn't matter because it's the Pittsburgh Penguins, and there's not much I can say more than that. I've said for a long time I've never been a, I haven't I'm not a fan of this defense on paper. Sullivan is an incredible coach, but um, I don't understand why they let Marino go. This this is an organization that stumbles into killer analytics, even though it doesn't appear that they pay much attention to analytics because. Bringing in Petrie, who is not very good defensively the last year or two, uh, instead of Marino with a head scratcher for me for a, for a team that really doesn't have the greatest defensive defenseman. Latang plays, you know, built into, became a better defenseman over time in his career. Brian Demelin, eh, you know, Marcus Peterson, like Jan Ruta is overrated. On paper, this team shouldn't be all that great in the East. But they, every time I say that, you can throw it out the window and they just win. They just win. Their compete level is insane. Sidney Crosby is one of at least the top five best leaders of this generation, maybe more. And everybody feeds off that, it seems, and they just freaking win, no matter what. Nobody, No team in the league has better compete. Now, your better biggest question... The biggest question mark right now probably is the play of Tristan Jari. He's been very inconsistent, and um, his throughout his career, when he's hot, he's super hot. When he's not, he's not. He'll probably get hot again. Pittsburgh will make the playoffs, and we'll see what happens from there. I know one thing. I'm always rooting for the Sid, man. I just love him. Just love, 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 love. If there was a poster boy for hockey, Sid might be it, man. The guy lives, eats, breathes it. Incredible leader. Incredible person. I would love him to win another cup. So tell me what you think about that, Pittsburgh Penguins fans. Subscribe to my channel or let me know my YouTube channel. Okay, San Jose Sharks. And, yeah, they, they went out to Europe, came back, struggled just like Nashville did. Um, don't have the greatest record right now. They've They've had a they've had a tough time to start start the year. Most people figured that would be the case based on the on the lineup 
that they have, 3, 8, and 2 is not great, but you know what? i got to say something here. Every time, the last couple games, this San Jose Sharks team, and we are going to talk about Eric Carlson. Whoa! This San Jose team, man, is playing with heart. They're playing as a team. I mean, I don't think they're going to make the, make the playoffs this year, but I love the identity that they're building for themselves. I, I really do. Um, I think they're going to be good down the road. I, I think they're building a character team here now with Quinn. I had my questions about Quinn. Um, however, when I looked at the Ranger team when he was hired, I realized that, you know what, he had a super young team here, and they, they actually played pretty darn well, considering they weren't spectacular five-on-five. Five. Um, he seemed to get the best out of that team, and he seems to be getting the best out of this team too, and he's certainly getting the best out of, or Carlson's just getting the best out of himself with Eric Carlson. Ten goals and eight assists and 18 points, 13 games. If this guy's healthy again, man, please, 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 Eric, be healthy again. And I hope he can find a home where he can go and try to win a cup again. Because when Eric Carlson's playing like the superstar that he is, this league is better. I just freaking love Eric Carlson. I've always loved Eric Carlson. When he was in Ottawa and he played on that broken foot, which is probably ill-advised and actually hurt his career, um, it was amazing to watch. He, he's a, you know, not stupendous defensively, but it, when you're that kind of offensive like he has, when, he, when you're that brilliant offensively, it's anywhere near average defensively is, is more than suffice. And he is hitting it again, and it's so fun to watch. I hope San Jose Sharks fans, you're going in there and watching this man play the way he's playing right now because this is pure brilliance. Um, overall, I, I doubt very much this team is going to, you know, do a lot and they're going to miss the playoffs more than likely, but there, there's a golden, uh, silver lining, golden, maybe a golden lining is a better way of putting it, that this team is playing with a lot of heart, rough, toughing it out. Last night against Florida, they didn't back down. They kept on coming back. There's a lot of pushback in this team. Quinn is up there spitting and driving these guys like a sergeant. And I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. This is the best I've seen San Jose for a long time. Appreciate at least the work ethic these guys are putting in. San Jose Sharks fans, comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about all that. Hopefully you get a really good pick this year. Uh, the, the bad part about it is they're playing so well, they might keep themselves out of that really top, top pick, superstar guy. But this team needed an identity, and uh, I think they're getting one. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about that, San Jose Sharks fans. And now we have the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, sorry, the Columbus Blue Seattle, we already did Columbus. Seattle Kraken. Early, early, but the thing that is blowing me away with the Seattle Kraken, first of all, look at this, 4-1-1 one, one on the road. Last year, the road record was terrible. 2-3-1 and one at home. And I was um, on the fence about their coach, who I, have, who I have to remember his name, Haxtell. On the fence, because he, he struggled a lot in Philadelphia as a rookie coach. There's no doubt about that. But the guy has really got this team on, on believing in themselves right now. And maybe it's the veteran leadership that came in with Andre Burakovsky and Oliver Bjorkstrand. And maybe it's just a mix of players that are learning to play with each other. You got Matthew Beneers. Future superstar, just love Matthew Beneers, man. Oh, my gosh. You see him 
He reminds me, reminds me of the Felinos, like back in the old days in the 90s as well with the Traches and guys that just freaking grr. They got that grr in them, but they're skilled as hell at the same time. I just freaking love them, man. And uh, this team seems either rallying behind Beneers, the coaching, or it's the coaching of Hackstall, or whatever it is, this team believes in themselves. Now, a lot of teams might be just taking them by being surprised right now, thinking of Seattle of last year and not realizing how good they are. But, and maybe this starts to, you know, change down the road. But for now, 6 4 and 2, I think it's some fun to watch and it's fun to root for them. Can't talk much, uh, go. You know, we got to talk about Shane Wright a little bit. That situation, difficult situation there. Trying to make the best of it. The league, please stop this nonsense about players not being able to go to the AHL. You got to work out something where there's certain players that can go to the AHL because the um, organizations are put put the foot down now and said. You, my friends, I am not sending you to junior anyways. So if they're not going to send you to junior anyways, how is it helping your league? And it's certainly not helping Shane Wright and all the other guys that, because they would be better developed there. And it's certainly not helping the league because their best players are not getting proper development. And it's not helping the franchise for the same reason. So as it stands right now, it's helping no one. So something has to be done. Um, but. Vince Dunn, I thought he was going to, I said he was going to have a career year. Looks like he's heading that way. Adam Larson has taken this team by the horns, and he's looked better than I've ever seen him. And I'm an Edmonton Oilers fan. I have never seen Adam Larson look this good. Never, Not that he was ever bad. He's a good defensive defenseman. But I've never seen him look this good. This team is flying. And then we can't stop without talking about Martin Jones. This guy was not this guy did nothing for like a decade now. He has not been a good pl- a goaltender for a decade now. What's his number? What's his numbers? Okay, they're not great. He's had a couple rough outings, but lately he's been stopping everything. Everything. If that can keep up, good for Jones. Um well, we'll see what happens down the road here. Do I think that they're gonna make the playoffs? I don't know. I don't know. I hope they do. I really hope they do. Because that just, for Seattle fans in general to have a new franchise, you know, it's kind of tough to watch your team lose and think that your team is going to lose. To, to, to have hope like this is great for, and it's great for the league too, to have competitive new teams like this. So I hope they do. I really do. I didn't have them making the playoffs, but I think they may. Next. Oh, yes, the St. Louis Blues. And, uh, uh, yeah, I hate to say I told you so, but I was really worried about the Blues this year. Um, when, when you take a guy like Nick Letty, who's not a top-pairing defenseman, and you give him $4 million a year and act like he is a, a top-pairing defenseman, I have to really wonder about what the organi- where the organization is going as a franchise. Um the other problem, and the big problem, the elephant in the room, which I think might even be a bigger problem than we thought, is Jordan Bennington. Jordan Bennington. Jordan Bennington's attitude is diabolically bad, and I, I seriously think it's really getting to be a problem in the room. Even I, I don't. I think he's lost respect for his teammates. This is just my thinking based on what I see from the outside. He's lost respect in the league. And when he is whining and stuff like he is right now, he doesn't go anywhere. He just doesn't go anywhere. He doesn't, he can be an amazing goaltender. We all know that. We've seen Bennington at his best. He can be amazing. In the playoffs last year, before he got injured, he was focused and he looked great. But when he's not, oh my gosh, he's not only terrible, 
He's mouthy. He's bratty. And that story, that, that permeates through a room. I, I, I played, and I didn't play at the highest level or anything like that, but if you play team sports and you have that guy that is just constantly whining and sarcastic, and especially if he's talking down to his teammates, and I don't know if that is 100% for sure, but I wouldn't put it past him. It really does affect the whole team. And another thing I want to say about this, they go through a bad run, they go on the road, they go on a bad run, they come back home, that bad run continues. They don't look like they're confident. They look like they're beat up, beat down. And the organization comes out and tries to shame them, saying that almost like they're putting the, this is the last straw, or um, I can't remember the exact words that they were using, but it's, it's just unacceptable in so many words, but it was even worse than that. They read the riot act. I'll tell you something, man. Shame does not motivate players. It doesn't. Players know when they're playing bad. And yeah, sometimes you got to, you know, say some stuff, but publicly shaming your team in a time when they're at their lowest. I, I, I just, I, this organization, I, I don't know. I don't know. Ever since Armstrong left and went to Arizona, it just seems like it's all gone downhill, and I don't see it changing. Their draft and development system is great. They're getting guys like Jake Neighbors, and, you know, that's a big plus. They, they have a lot of guys coming up in their lineup as far as prospects are concerned that could be all right. Maybe not like ready, ready. Nikita Alexandrov, um, Tyler Tucker is looks like a seventh rounder that might work out okay. But Letty Pareko, uh, Falk has probably they've been playing the best. I mean, three goals and seven assists out of, out of all their their defensemen right now. But Pareko is really overrated. He's never bounced back from his injuries. They haven't did anything about it. Um, Ryan O'Reilly. I don't know what is he injured? Somebody tell me. Like, is he playing hurt or something? He doesn't look good. The whole team just looks absolutely terrible. And honestly, this time I don't think it's turning around. Um, I had them as a bubble team, and people were like, St. Louis, a bubble team, really? I'm like, yeah, man. I'm really not confident in this defense, and I'm not confident that Bennington is going to be able to be consistent enough to make up for it. So Tell me what you think, St. Louis fans. Comment in the comment section and let me know. Tampa Bay Lightning, again, another team. Um, this I actually took the Tampa Bay Lightning to win the Atlantic this year. And the reason why I took them to win it is I just thought this was a year that they were going to have to try every game to win because they don't have McDonough. They don't have Palat. They don't have that super deep, spectacular lineup that they have to have. So they're not going to be able to kind of coast through like they have in the past. And I thought they would know that and turn their game into like a more grinded out win every win, win game type of system with Cooper, who I think is one of the most underrated coaches that there is, that they would pull it out. Of course, with Vasilevsky as well, that they would just start – playing hard, and maybe pooch out in the playoffs and lose in the first round. I thought something like that. But now I'm starting to wonder even about that. Because um, I'm wondering if they're going to be able to hold out this lineup with the depth that they have. And maybe I didn't take that into consideration so much. With Sorelli being out a long time, uh, you know, Hedman, when he comes back in, he'll hold the fort. I still think they'll at least bubble and make it in. But I'm really worried about guys like Nick Purbich, uh, Hayden Fleury. He hasn't been able to get his footing anywhere. Philip Myers is already out of the lineup. Like, these are guys that are fringe NHLers, if not, if they are NHLers or not at, at, at all. Um, and you're hoping that they can finally just make it they can finally just make it. Um, and that's not something you want to hope for for a team, really, right? Like, you, you, they have a, a pretty good sample size of not being NHLers. 
and you're they're part of your top six right now. So, and there's not much in the in, in there's not much coming up that can take their spots. You know, Sean Day, he's not even doing good in the AHL right now. Trevor Carrick is a bit of fringe NHL or just like the rest of them. As far as forwards, Alex Barboulé is is uh, doing really well right now, but um, I wouldn't say that. You know, he he does well in the AHL, but he's not great as a, in the NHL. He hasn't been able to get his footing in the NHL. There's not much here to for replacement players, is what I'm trying to say. And I'm starting to get a little wonder how I'm starting to wonder how they're going to do through the 82 game schedule. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm not as confident as I was to start the season. I, I don't think I really, I think I did like what a lot of other people do. And uh, I think I do what a lot of other people do. And I just went on reputation that they were going to be super good. Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, and okay, this is okay. This is the thing with the Toronto Maple Leafs. There is so much hype with Toronto, being in Toronto and the center of the universe, and all of those sort of things like that. Like nobody is on, no team is under a microscope more than the Toronto Maple Leafs. And when we look at their record, they they just lost like four in a row, and they they uh, and they did happen to win one, but. The world, everything has fallen down when Toronto is on a losing streak. And but is it really as bad as we think? They're five, four, and two. They spent uh, their home record is fine. They had a difficult time on the road. I mean, who doesn't have a difficult time on the road? You know, teams quite often have a difficult time on the road. Matthews hasn't hit his stride yet. Tavares has actually picked it up, but. There has been other issues in here, and I, I do think Toronto's going to turn it around and, you know, make the playoffs and hopefully win a round for Toronto fans' sake. But the, the other issue that has come up quite a bit, and I have to say I'm concerned about as well, is the way they seem to have kid gloves with guys like Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner and stuff like that. Uh, Sheldon Keefe came out and publicly said that his best players had to be better and all of those sort of things like that. The next day he comes out and publicly basically apologizes and says he apologized in the room for what he said. And then he also said in the same interview that when he told them in the room that they were like, what are you talking about? Because what he said really wasn't something that any other coach would say. And he was right. The best players went to, producing it was simple as that but he said i told them in the room and they asked they didn't know what you were talking about so what i got from that was and the way he said it it sort of seemed like he was sheepish i don't think he was the one that was saying to say that and this is what i think the problem is with toronto as a whole is they they are a corporate entity they are a corporate team. If anybody who knows this, if you go to Toronto games, it is run by corporations. And if you go to their home games, it's quiet because most of the people there are not real hockey fans. They're there to be cool. They're there to, they're there to be part of the corporate fabric system. Heavily sponsored team. And it feels like to me that their decisions quite often are based on that. And they're so desperately afraid that Austin Matthews is going to leave after this contract that they're like, don't say that about Austin. Don't say that about, we can't have that. We don't want to say any, but we celebrate Matthews here because he is the bread and butter. He's the reason why that we have sponsors and all that kind of stuff like that. And it seems like that runs the team more than actually running the team. Tell me what you think, Toronto fans about that and in doing so I get the feeling sometimes that Austin Matthews even like we just saw in a situation where Austin Matthews got pushed around and he smiled and then kind of pushed the guy and he kept on smiling like ah, and then everybody went and fought his battles 
and he just stood there and didn't do nothing. It, he, it almost seems like there's a prima donna type thing going on there. I could be wrong, but all of that's going to affect the team. All this being said, I, I did want to mention that, and I do affect, think it affects the team. And I do it affect, think it affects operations and what's said to a team and what should be said to a team for it to become the best that it can be. All this being said, nothing's fallen down here. John Tavares is actually having a great year so far. Austin Matthews still has 10 points in 11 games and four goals. Uh, it's pretty likely he, he's starting to get his chances again. It's pretty likely that they're going to go back. They're going to start going in. And this team will probably be okay. Uh, they did all this with a defense without Timothy Lilligren. They were playing Justin Hole way too much. Um, uh, Timothy Lilligren is an excellent part of this team. And for a defense that isn't spectacular, it's something that they need really bad to have a Timothy Lilligren in there. I love the way he plays. I love the way he has progressed as a player. And I think this team is going to be a heck of a lot better with him. We all know about the Murray situation. I mean, he's injured again, like always, always with this guy. Um, Ilya Samsonov, what a revelation this guy is. I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming, but he's playing fantastic. Uh, Shalgren, I don't like. Uh, they can find themselves a backup. Everything will settle down, though. Toronto will get back to their game. They'll make it into the playoffs. And this year, I think they're going to have a chance to be able to win in the first round. Everybody says, right? But, um, you know, a lot of teams are – Detroit's a better team, but are they a team that's going to win in the first round team? I don't think so. Ottawa as well, if they make the playoffs at all, which I don't think so. Their biggest competition, I think they can beat Tampa Bay, honestly, in a seven-game series with the way that team is made up right now. Buffalo and Boston could be their difficulty. And we'll see how it turns out. But if out of all the years, I think this is a year that they really can become better. The Vancouver Canucks, Toronto Maple Leafs, comment in the comment section. I wanted to say all of that. Um, the Vancouver Canucks. And I said it before the season started. And I, I can't, I was pretty much, turns out in this case, so far, I was right. I mean, this defense is not good enough, and that's it. You can't have Luke Shen playing 17 minutes a night, man. He, he, he's a 12-minute-a-night defenseman on a, on a decent team. Uh, Tyler Myers, way too many minutes. 22 minutes a night, he's just not a top-two defenseman, and neither is Ekman Larson at this stage of his career. So... Quinn Hughes is fantastic offensively. He's not great defensively. I like the pickup of Ethan Bear. I think he's going to definitely be better than some of the other options that they already had there. But overall, it's nowhere near where it needs to be to be a playoff team in a division that has the Edmonton Oilers, I mean, Calgary Flames. Check out what I said about the Calgary Flames. Um, Vegas Golden Knights, uh, it's going to be very tough. And Demko really hasn't been himself, let's, let's face it. But I can't, it's, it's seriously the defense. I think Demko will play better, but if they don't do anything about this defense, nothing's going to change, I believe, until it happens. There's really nothing wrong with their top nine, especially when they get Besser back, if he comes. I don't know, he gets injured a lot, but especially when they get Brock Besser back, Curtis Lazar, um, they're deep. They've got a solid top nine. They've got a playoff top nine. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I would say they're probably going to have to use somebody in this top nine to get themselves a defenseman down the road. Now, you tell me who that's going to be. They just signed J I personally think it should be JT Miller because he's tradable. Possibly now. He's got 10 points in 11 games. But how do you sign that long contract with somebody and then trade them? It's just, it, it's a terrible message to your young players that you're going to treat a player like that. Unless, and I've heard that there's a lot of people in this room that are not a fan of JT Miller. 
And if that's the truth, and I don't know if it is, then that's what I would do. You can get a very good return at $5 million right now out there. He can play center, left wing, right wing. He goes on a more leadership-driven team, so he's not the big voice. Because personally, I did, I just, I'm not a fan of what his voice. I'm not a fan of what he said when the, they tell, ask him about the sweaters on the ice. They were thrown on the ice because the team was playing bad. Horvat said, we have to be better defensively. We're not playing well. And people say, well, he said that all last year. He was right all last year. Was that because of Horvat? No. Do you think he needed to try harder? No. The defense was bad last year. It's bad this year. Hasn't There's been nothing really done about it. He was accurate. JT just basically said, if they want to go buy, pay, spend a lot of money on their shit, first of all, calling Vancouver Canucks jersey shit offhandedly, and throw it on the ice, that's up to them. I have a job to do. That's what he said. No ownership whatsoever. Nothing saying, you know, we, kind of, we probably deserve to be booed right now. You know, nothing saying, yeah, like, our defense needs to be better. We need to be better defensively. Now, a player will say that. And the team will try to be better defensively. But if you don't have the pieces to be better defensively, what are you going to do? And that becomes a problem in the room in itself. Because you know you don't have the players to become better defensively. So, anyways, I think that's what Horvat's saying. Oh, I, I put it on the organization here. Something has to be done with this organization to, uh, and maybe they're working on it. They haven't been there for very long as far as uh, a, a management team is concerned. It's not easy to find defensemen out there. Maybe they will. Okay, Vegas Golden Knights. I, I had this team making the playoffs. A lot of people didn't. And the reason why I had this team making the playoffs is because I thought Jack, Jack Geico was going to have a stellar year. Cassidy is a great coach. They have a great defense. I did not have them making, making, making the playoffs like most people out there. I was concerned about what Logan Thompson and Aiden Hill were going to be for them. But they've been absolutely fantastic. And if this goaltending keeps up for Vegas, watch out, man. Watch out for this team. The speed on this team is freaking insane. Best defensive team in the league this year. People think of Vegas, they think of offense with uh, Marcia So, Stone, Chandler Stevenson, Smith, Carlson, Eichel. I mean, there is, and the speed that they have, uh, the speed that they have makes them, makes you go, this is a highly offensive team, but actually they are an immensely good defensive team. Mark Stone may be the best defensive winger in the game. And all of these players are taking that stance. Chandler Stevenson, Riley Smith, great defensive winger, uh, Carlson, all of them. And then you got Phil Kessel to add in more offense down, down the lineup. Nicholas Roy probably could play in most teams' top three. The top three, the top, the centers on this team are some of the best center depth in the league. When Nicholas Roy is playing on your fourth line, he's a fantastic offensive player. He, on, on a lot of teams, he played in teams top six. And, of course, you have Martinez, Peter Angelo, Tador, McNabb's a good defensive guy. You know, Hag and White Cloud do their jobs down there. Excellent team. Excellent team. Better than I thought they were going to be, and that's because of the goaltending. Watch out, man. Watch out for this team in the playoffs. They could do it. They could do it this year. Tell me what you think about that, Vegas fans. Uh, I don't see anything that they would move or try to add to unless there's injuries. Um, they have guys that played last year in the NHL that can come up and play. This team is set up, man. Comment in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about that. Washington Capitals, and they're basically the team that I thought they would be to start the year. Uh, hovering around 500, I didn't think that they were going to make the playoffs this year. 
But the thing is, when I watch this team, a lot of the time, like I have watched quite a bit of Washington, the thing that kind of concerns me is they kind of playing like they know they're going to miss the playoffs. <laughs> um, that being said, it's only 10 games in the season, and they have had to really – they have a lot of players that haven't played with each other before. Johansson, they brought in Dylan Strom. Um, is that – that's pretty much it, though, isn't it? Because Sherry played with Kuznetsov and Ovechkin. No, maybe I'm overstating that. But it's just a very nondescript lineup without Wilson. It's the injuries, too, right? TJ Oshie's injured again. Tom Wilson's going to be out for quite a long time still. Maybe, I don't know how long it is now. Nicholas Backstrom, unsure whether he, when he'll ever come back. And then Connor Brown gets hurt. And it leaves him with a very cut-up lineup. Um, and, of course, Carlson on defense as well. Which leaves this defense. Trevor Van Riemsdyk is playing way too many minutes for him. Uh, Nick Jensen is doing the best he can there at 20 minutes. It's just, it's too bad. It's hard to watch a team that was so great kind of fall away here with injuries and everything. They're going to have a down year. It just, I thought that in the beginning of the year. I think most Washington Capitals fans I've talked to have thought that as well. Maybe the perfect time to get a really good draft pick in one of the deepest drafts that there is. Reload and try again next year with these guys that are getting up there. Ovechkin, 37 years old, not even a point in the game so far in 12 games played. Um, Kuznetsov, not even a goal yet. And, and he's played like he just doesn't have that. Eh. All of them just don't really feel like they have that drive this year. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that they look around and go, yeah. When you're when 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 I think when a veteran team like this realizes that they're probably not a contender, it's really tough to get up and get going, you know. All right, Winnipeg Jets, and uh, I had them missing the playoffs this year. I still have them missing the playoffs this year. I did say that I think Bonus would be uh, a good person for the room for this group. He is a good player coach. Um, he's going to get them playing as good defensively as this team can be. And Connor Hollebuck just may take this team right into the playoffs himself, the way he's playing right now. He's been absolutely freaking insane. But I still don't like this defense. Steel Pionk is their best defenseman. Morrissey's putting up some points. That's good, but he's really overrated. Um, Brendan Dillon's good defensively, but, you know, it's just Nate Schmidt is not great, and this year he's even worse, especially if trying to play a bonus-type system where you're not allowed to take risks. Uh, Nate Schmidt is a risk-taker all the day. Like he, he wants to take the puck and go all the time, all the time. And uh, I, I had a feeling he may struggle in this system. So far, he's, he hasn't really struggled, struggled, but he hasn't looked great. It's just a very nondescript defense. And all of these offensive players, as you can see, their offense seems to have taken a hit so far. Nobody, nobody more so than Kyle Connor, because as you saw with Dallas last year, and now you see them this year where they're like a pure offensive dynamo, that's what Rick Bonus does. Rick Bonus wants to win games 2 1, 3 1, 3 2. One nothing if you can. You'd be happy to have that. And that's probably what Winnipeg's going to do all the way to a 500 season and miss the playoffs. That's what I thought before the season started. That's what I think now. And then I don't know what they're going to do from there. I don't know. I don't know what Winnipeg is going to do. Just keep on drafting and filling guys in the lineup and hopefully it all works together to eventually becoming a great team. But to me, they've settled into a bubble team, which is never something you want. Um, you got John Pierre Luc Dubois. You don't know where he's going next year. It seems like the room stuff has been taken care of here, but the roster stuff ha still hasn't, and I, I don't think it's going to change. All right, that's my full forty-two. That's all I have to give today. 
Tell me what you think about that all fans. Thanks for listening to this whole video. And uh, have a great day. Till next time, I'm going to be doing trade videos from now on. Oh, yes. Timu Meyer might be coming up. Maybe. Maybe Bo Horvat. Subscribe to my channel and let me know what you think about all that. Okay, bye.